This is Friday, February 9th, 2018. We are in Mansfield, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and we are privileged to have with us today Walter Gilbert. Welcome, Walter. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? September 5th, 1922. And where were you born? Cambridge, Mass. And what community do you currently live in? Mansfield. Your marital status? Married. Do you have children? I have three. Grandchildren? I have three. Great-grandchildren? I have two. Well, tell us a little bit about Cambridge when you, we were growing up. Well, it uh the normal growing up there was nothing outstanding during my uh, growing up period and uh then I went to Ringe Tech and from the Ringe Tech I went to Northeastern mm -hmm. and I understand your father was a teacher at Ringe yeah my father yeah he taught machine shop and while you were at Ringe uh were you made aware of events happening overseas Oh yes, we took history, mm -hmm. which they, they don't teach you now. <laughs> and what were you being told, like about Hitler and Mussolini? Well, they were they were not exactly desirables, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we knew that uh, that eventually we would probably have to get involved. And what year did you graduate from Ringe? Nineteen forty-one. So, uh, what were you doing when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in December of that year? I was at home and doing the normal things you do on Sunday. Uh, did you hear about the attack on the radio? Yes. That's all we had in those days. <laughs> okay. And you were a student at Northeastern. Right. And what was your major? I majored in engineering. Mechanical engineering. And uh, when you went into the army, did you enlist or did Uncle Sam want you? I was, when Pearl Harbor hit, I enlisted in the enlisted reserve corps at Northeastern, and it was in 1942. And then in September of 1943, I was called up and sent to Aberdeen Proving Ground and in Maryland. Was this your first time out of Massachusetts? Yes. All right, so um, what was down in the Aberdeen Proving Ground? Well, that's where they tested all the equipment that was to be used in, in battle. And what were your duties there? Well, I took my basic training there, and uh, I, uh, I did machine shop work, which uh, they sent me overseas as a machinist. And tell us a little bit about what basic was like. Well, basic training, while you went through, uh, uh, let's see now, you, you learned to fire a, a rifle, you learned to march, you learned to take commands, you went through uh, uh, rigorous uh, training exercises, like uh, crawling under barbed wire and going over fences and, and so forth. And tell us a little bit more about the ordinance that uh, you were working on. Were you working on like grenades, cannons? Tanks. Tanks. And what kind of tanks? Shermans. There was one other one, but I can't remember the name. Uh, tell us a little more about the Sherman tank. Well, it was one of our better tanks. It was not as good as some of the German tanks. Uh, but it, it was 
probably the standby tank of the of the army. Okay, Walter, how long were you stationed at Aberdeen before you were sent overseas? I was stationed in Aberdeen for roughly six months. Which would take us to around later 43, early 44? Yeah. Okay. No, no, we, it was, uh, yeah, I guess it would be early 44, yeah. Okay. It was sent to England. And you got, did you go by boat? Yeah. And what on was the, that like? On the Billy Mitchell. The Billy Mitchell, okay. Yeah, that, well, you, you were in a convoy of probably 100 ships, and we had uh, probably the oldest naval vessels that the, uh, the Navy had running alongside us, a four-stacker uh, a destroyer. And when we could move only as fast as the slowest ship in the, in the convoy, and there was approximately 100 in the convoy, so we moved very slowly across the ocean. <laughs> what did you do while you were heading on the slow boat to England? Just sat on, a, on the deck watching in general. At the time you landed in England, uh, were you part of an outfit? No, I was what they call a reservist. Okay. And what was your rank? Your rank? Oh, my rank was a PFC. PFC. So when did you land in England? Was that uh, just before Normandy? Oh yes, quite a while before Normandy. All right. And with, where in England did you? What were you stationed? I was stationed in uh, uh, Tidworth. And where is that? That's in the middle part of England. Oh, in the middle. Okay. Yeah. And were you assigned to an outfit then? No. Nope. Okay. Still in the reserves. Still in the reserves and still a machinist? Pardon? Were you uh, still a machinist or were you... He, no, I didn't do anything. Okay. Just sat around. <laughs> still sat around? Yeah. And how long did you sat around? <laughs> oh, let's see now. Let me think. From May until... About the 10th of June when I went to France. Okay. And in France, I was uh, assigned to a uh, military police unit. We were directing traffic. Okay. Let's, uh, let's hold off on France for just a moment and talk about, uh, while you were in the Midlands sitting around, were you hearing anything about invasion plans? Was there any scuttlebutt? Well, you got daily, uh, a daily uh, posting on what was going on as far as the war is concerned. And of course, we hadn't really, well, we were in South Africa fighting, but we didn't, uh, was it Ju uh, June 6th was when they, I don't know, it was in June, June, June 6th, was it? Normandy, yes. Yeah, hmm. at June 6th is when they had it. And it, it, at that time, we were guarding the advance camps. Now, the advance camps were men that were being sent overseas, I mean, to the invasion. And they were afraid that there would be German paratroopers. So we had machine gun uh, on jeeps. And we rode around the camp to make sure that there was no, no German paratroopers coming in. They never did, yeah, naturally. Okay. So where in France did you land? Carentan. Okay. Um, could you spell that, please? I don't know how to spell okay. it. Okay. But it was in France. Yeah. Uh, is that near Normandy or in another part? It was near saint Mary Greece. Okay. Which is where the 101st Airborne came in. I would say be closer to the Utah. Oh, Utah Beach? Okay. Yeah. 
So you get there about six, maybe seven days after the invasion. What were you seeing? Well, we, uh, I didn't see combat at that time. As I say, I was, uh, we were directing traffic. Okay. You know, they were sending all the units up to the front. We had what was called the Red Ball Express, and that was the units that used to take all the equipment and men up to the front. And what we did was we just acted as, as uh, traffic cops. I did that for maybe a month. All right. Uh, what happened after that? After that, I was assigned to the 26th Division. Better known as the? Huh? Better known as the? Yeah. Uh, oh, the Yankee Division. And what were, um, what were you going to be doing with the 26th? Well, uh, first of all, I was a PFC, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, my first uh, engagement was at Moncourt Woods. And during that time, I, was, I went out on a patrol and I saw the German buildup on our left flank. I came back and told my uh, the supervisor about it, not supervisor, but uh, uh, battalion commander about it. And I said, you, get bet you had better get men over in that area in order to protect it. Otherwise, they're going to come around and back and wipe us out. I was I, I received the the uh, 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 the uh, uh, bronze star for that, and I was made a staff sergeant. Okay, you're now a sergeant. It's still around what the summer of '44. September. September. Okay. All right, Walter. You're now a staff sergeant. Tell us what happened next. Well, from there, of course, we went. To, across northern France, taking one city and after another. In Benistroff, uh, we had quite a, a firefight, and some uh, civilians and, ch and children were caught in the middle, and I went out and brought them to safety. Okay, hey Walter, can you expand on that a little more, like how many civilians and how did you get them back to safety? Well, what I did was I exposed myself to them and I uh, uh, motioned to them to come toward me. And when they came toward me, I was able to get them behind the buildings. And, and what point? happened to them after that, I don't know. And this was done under heavy fire. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. We were, as I said, they were caught in crossfire. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was this when you were wounded? No. No. Okay. No, I was wounded uh, by a piece of shrapnel. It was I can't remember the name of the, of the town, but uh, then I, I I was only out for a week. Mm -hmm. I had got it into my leg. From there, we moved up and took the, uh, uh, trying to think of what the name of the, the Marginal Line. Mm -hmm. And from the Marginal Line, we moved into Metz, which is on the border of Luxembourg. From there, the Germans started the Battle of the Bulge. We moved into Luxembourg with the 4th Armored Division and the 6th Cavalry Division. Uh, to spearhead the attack, and from there we went to relieve the 101st Airborne at Bastogne. And during that period, that is when I received the French Croix de Guerre. Um, when did you earn the Silver Star? Was that when you were rescuing the civilians? That was when I moved into Luxembourg. I took a uh, platoon of nine men crossed the Sewer River, and we 
penetrated into German territory. We then were in a big uh, firefight. I, we weren't supposed to fight, being in a patrol. I withdrew my men, found that the boats we had, the rubber boats, had been sunk. So I ordered them to uh, swim back across the river one at a time so the Germans wouldn't get they get wind of it. I stayed behind until the last man had crossed under fire and then I came across and I gave my thing and next thing I know I had a silver star. Congratulations. <laughs> so Walter, let's, uh, let's pause you for a moment and talk about what you were wearing and what the, what the grub was like basically. Um, you were wearing a standard army issue, I take it, the, the heavy jacket, the helmet? Well, in those days, they didn't have the equipment they had today. Uh -huh. All you had was a helmet, and that was it. And what kind of weapons? Well, I, I, first I started out with a Garand, uh -huh. which is a rifle. Then I had, had a Thompson submachine gun. From there I went in and I had it, it, it was a primitive AK-47, and that's what I, I had until this time as I was hit by a tree burst from a German 88, and I spent the next five months in an army hospital uh, getting my legs back then to someone near normal. I know you've been through a lot of battles and did you, what were you feeling? Is this is like uh, you're 18, 19, 20 years old. Yeah, I, I, I was in, I had 180 days of combat. You always wanted if you were going to be hit the next minute. You're constantly, you know, aware of what was going on, trying to protect yourself. I had, uh, uh, I had um, 42 men under me that I was in command of at the time, and uh, that was it. I mean, you had to lead the men into, into combat. Now, you mentioned the, uh, the German 88. Uh, can it, you elaborate a bit? The German 88 was the most feared shell that, 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 that we had. It, it uh, you can hear it coming in by the screeching sound, and it will hit a tree, it will blow the tree apart, and but it usually didn't hurt the trunk. When you heard them coming in, you you tried to run and hug a tree, but I never I never made it. Mm -hmm. I was in the uh, too, I was uh, in the open, and I was hit by shrapnel, legs, I want to. Um, and uh, I spent the next five months in army hospital, first with uh, casts on both legs and my arm, and then later rehabbed I, uh, in England. I, I came back to the United States, landed on the, on the day that the Germans surrendered. I was then sent to, to uh, Camp Devons up in air. And from there, I went to rehab at Camp Edwards down at the Cape, where I was uh, discharged. Okay. And how, how, was the, how was the medical care? How, how, how was the medical care, uh, oh. being in the hospital and all? Oh, they treated you real well. Mm -hmm. They took good care of me. I couldn't complain at that. Uh, I just wanted to double check when you were wounded in the late, was it late 44? My first one? Uh, the second one. Oh, the second the one? Yeah. Oh, March 5th, 1943. Uh, 45? Five. Five. Interfering Let me just turn off. Okay, Walter, I want to go back to the time when you swam the river, um, helping your platoon to safety. Uh, what happened immediately after? Well, after I swam across the river, of course, this was the middle of winter and it was down below freezing, 
I was, my clothes were frozen stiff. I couldn't find my rifle. I came back through a town and nobody challenged me. I went to the next town and they challenged me and they brought me in and, and uh, they said, where'd you come from? I told them. They said, we've been trying to take that town all day. I said, go ahead and take it. I said, I just came through there and nobody stopped me. <laughs> I hope they gave you a set of dry clothes after that. Oh, did they? Oh, yes. Yeah, I got all dry. Oh, I had to. I was, well, I was frozen stiff, you know. I, I could hardly move my arms because my clothes are all frozen solid. What about the rest of your men? Uh, were they with you or were you just in there alone? Oh, the nine men I sent back. Oh, okay. One at a time. Uh -huh. So they got, I didn't come back until they were all back across the river. And I was, I was still under fire at that time. Yeah. All right, so wounded, you're in the hospital for a while, you get back to the United States just in time for VE Day. What was that like? Well, everybody was cheering, the nurses come up and we were hugging, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by the time VJ Day came, I was, I was out of the service. Uh, when were you discharged? August 5th, 1945. Just before. So that meant, um, yeah, that was just before the, uh, the A-bomb. Right. What did you think about that? Well, I thought that was, I mean, first of all, it was, it was hushed up. And uh, then after, after a while, they gave all the details of it. And of course, the, the Japanese said, well, I think we better surrender before they blow the island up. <laughs> Yeah, I know that a lot of servicemen were about to invade Japan, so uh, yes. yeah, they were pretty much relieved. Oh yes, of course. Okay, well, so my division was being, being uh, uh, prepped to go to Japan. So Walter, you're now, it's August 45, you're out of the Army. What was your rank when you left? Staff Sergeant. You were a Staff Sergeant, and uh, I know you were wounded, but did you join the Reserves? after the war? No, 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 okay. no, no, I, I couldn't. You were, <laughs> I was just, I'd been what they call 4F, ah. you know. Just wanted to make sure. And in addition to the Silver Star and the Bronze Star, and I believe Quarter Gear, one of them. <laughs> I got the French and Belgian Quarter Gear. Okay. And then I got uh, uh, I got four battle stars, which was Normandy, Northern France, the Battle of the Bulge, and uh, the Rhineland. And uh, any other commendations or medals? Well, I received the um, the Normandy. Uh, well, I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about the, uh, getting the French Legion of Honor. Well, it all started out was my wife and I were sitting down at the table uh, to have supper and received a call from the French Embassy saying they wanted to talk to me. Well, I thought at first it was a joke, but they called me in. They told me I was being considered uh, to receive the Legion of Honor, and would I r write up what I did in the service in France only, which I did. And you, you'll probably get a copy of that because mm -hmm. uh, Liz is making that up now. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, then uh, 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 oh, they said that, uh, they called me up and said they had received it. They would have to trans uh, translate it into French. It would probably take two or three months and within a month, I got a letter from the uh, French Embassy in Washington that uh, the uh, President of France had made me a, uh, uh, well, it turned out to be a knight okay. in the Legion of Honor. Oh, Chevalier. Yeah, Chevalier, yes. right. Yeah. And when did you receive the honor? 
It was in May of, 19, of 2012. Mm -hmm. And where did you receive it? At the uh, Garden of Auditorium in the State House. And who, uh, who presented you with the, uh, with the honor? Uh, the uh, a French consulate in Boston. And that must have been some kind of honor. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Yeah. And did you join any veteran service organizations such as? I belong to the Legion of Foreign Veterans of Foreign Wars and the and the uh, uh, disabled American veterans. Okay. And do you uh, go to reunions? No. No. So, Walter, what did you do after the war? I went back to Northeastern, got my degree, went to work. And where did you work? I worked for American Mutual. I was, I was uh, a district engineer for American Mutual. 30, 37 years. Really? Yeah. And what does a district engineer do? Well, I was uh, uh, in the branch of the mechanical engineering as a safety. I was a safety engineer. And my job was to go around the plants, ch <coughs> uh, check for hazards, hold safety meetings, set up safety committees, talk with, with uh, 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 CEOs, presidents, and treasurers on, on the control of accidents. We, we called it loss control. And that was my job. And when did you move to Mansfield? 1950. And why did you uh, move to Mansfield? Well, at that time, my first wife, who passed away, worked in Boston, and I worked in Providence. So we get a place in between. Makes sense. OK. Walter, uh, is there any uh, stories that you can recollect from your time in the Army that you'd like to mention now? Uh, any humorous tales, any mm, other... Can't think of any. Can't think of any. No. Um, how important was it for you to serve in the military? Well, I thought it was my duty. I mean, after all, you know, I, I joined up. I wasn't drafted. Mm-hmm. And, Walter, did any of your children go into the military? No. They're all girls. Well... Mm -hmm. How about any of the grandchildren? No. No? Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up this interview? No, I think you've, you've covered practically everything. Okay. Walter Gilbert, we thank you so much for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project.